In this segment, you will learn skills to improve your questioning techniques. Before we begin, if you have not done so already, please download the documents that go with this segment. The most important skill you can have as a sales consultant is the ability to ask good questions. Most salespeople get into sales because someone told them they have the gift to gab. The problem is that that way of thinking leads you to believe that during a discussion with a customer, you should be doing all the talking. However, this could not be further from the truth. When you are having a conversation with a customer, you should not be doing the majority of the talking. Your customer should. As I pointed out in the Building Value in the Sales Process video, as well as the Feature and Benefit video, gross profit and increased customer satisfaction are made when you find out what is important to your customer and then show them how your products and services benefit them. In order to find out information from your customer, you have to get them to start talking and you have to stop talking. Questions are the way to achieve this. Just to be clear, you can sell cars without asking any questions or by asking very few questions. However, your grosses will be low and your customer satisfaction scores will be low also. My goal is to make you successful, with success being defined as selling more units at a higher gross profit with increased customer satisfaction. Using questions effectively can help you to be successful. So, let's look at how questions can help you be successful. Questions can help you set the correct tone when you first meet a customer as well as throughout the sales process. As I discuss in the consultative selling video, you want to be constantly increasing a customer's trust in you while reducing their anxiety. Proper questioning techniques can help you do this. Knowing when to ask a certain question and when to wait until later will determine whether or not your customer's trust is going up or if their anxiety is. For example, if a young looking customer walks onto your lot, you do not want to ask them to come back with their parents. However, after getting to know this customer, you may find out from him that he has no credit and his father is willing to co-sign for him. In this case, asking him when he can come back with his father is very appropriate. In addition, greeting a customer with a question like, great day out today, isn't it? is better than greeting them with the question, how can I help you? Throughout the sales process, asking questions in a way that shows that you are really interested in your customer's answers will help you to increase your customer's trust and reduce their anxiety. So, use questions to help you set a positive tone with your customers. Customers today want to be treated as individuals. They do not want the same sales pitch that they have been getting for the last 30 years. If all you are doing is giving the same sales pitch to every customer, then your dealership might as well hire a trained chimp to do your job. One of the keys to being successful in sales is the ability to get to know your customers individually. Not only will this help you tailor your presentation to that customer, but it will also help you to differentiate yourself. Remember. You just have to be better than the sales consultant at the dealership down the street. If you get to know your customer personally, you will be well on your way to being better than the other guy. Through asking questions of your customers, you get to know what is important to them so that you can tailor your presentation to them. You have heard me talk about how features are what something is and benefits are what it does for the customer that you are with. The only way to take the features of your vehicles and your sales process and show the customer the benefits of those features is to get to know what is important to them. The use of questions will give you this information. Questioning skills are useful in helping you develop a long-term relationship with your customers. If your customers represent a cash register to you, then your goal is going to be to ring up as many sales as fast as possible. However, if you think your customers represent a long-term relationship or an ongoing partnership, the result can be a short and long-term win-win. Questions will help you open the door to win-win. Customers are constantly giving you information. However, you need to make sure you are following up the information they give you with good questions. By doing this, you will be getting information about the customer 
that you can use not only to sell them a car today, but also to help you build a relationship with them for the future. I want to give you skills to not only sell to the customer that, you, that just came in the door, but also to develop a relationship with that customer so that you can sell them and their family and friends cars in the future as well. Good questioning skills will help you to achieve this. Questions are the best way to uncover customer concerns. Questions will not create objections, but they do surface them. All customers have objections at some point in the sales process. As we discuss in the Resolving Objections video, you want to find out what these objections are as early in the sales process as possible. Questions will help you uncover these objections. Don't believe those old timers who think that just by asking a question, you can create an objection. Customers either have objections or they don't. If they do, I would want to know about it as soon as I could so I could go to work resolving it. In addition, as we discuss in the Resolving Objections video, each objection has one or more reasons behind it. The proper use of questions will help you to determine what those reasons are. Questions help you to guide your customer through the sales process. You can either pull your customer through the process and have very little gross and low customer satisfaction, or you can guide them through the sales process and have them feel like they are in control of the process. As you have seen in the other videos, when you do not get to know your customer at the beginning of the sales process, you are forced to pull them through the process using smoke and mirrors. Questions allow you to take a customer from one point in the process and move them to another point while they feel like they are in control. Now that you know how questions can help you to be more successful, let's get into questioning techniques. Just to make sure we are all on the same page, I want to discuss the different types of questions. Close-ended questions are those that require a yes or no or short answer. What time is it? is a closed-ended question. These questions usually take longer to ask than to answer. Open-ended questions are questions that require a more thorough answer. These questions usually take longer to answer than to ask. Both types of questions can be used as you gather information from your customers. Sometimes you will want a more in-depth answer, so you will use an open-ended question. Other times you may want to just confirm something the customer had previously stated so you will use a close-ended question. One type of open-ended question that gives you more information is called a drill-down question. This type of question requires the customer to elaborate or give more information. For example, saying something like, go on, or tell me more, instructs the customer to elaborate on what they just told you. Drill-down questions, that second or third question, is where you will get the information you are really looking for. When you ask questions, make sure you focus on the customer. Questions must be relevant. Your questions must be made in response to what your customer said. Key in on the words they are saying. If your customer says, I was impressed with your competitor, don't go into your sales pitch. Instead, say, what is it that impressed you? This is also an example of a drill down question. The answer to this question will start to give you information you will need to sell them a car. However, it is just a start. The next question will give you even more information. As you ask questions, the sales process is moving along and you are getting the information you need to determine which features of your vehicles and process are going to be benefits to your customer. You can then sell them those benefits. When asking questions, it is easy to fall into the trap where you stop having a conversation with the customer and start interrogating them instead. If you ask questions, especially closed-ended questions, in succession, one after the other, it can sound like an interrogation. For example, what brought you in today? Are you interested in new or pre-owned? Do you prefer light or dark colors? Is the vehicle for you or your wife? Asking questions like this will not only not create the right tone with your customer, it will also increase their anxiety, 
which will make them less likely to open up and share with you the information you need to sell them a car. Instead, you should be using what I call cushions. Before each of these questions, you can cushion it with something like, do you mind if I ask? I'm wondering. I'm curious. Would you like to tell me? By the way, tell me more. Go on. I sense there's more to this story. Back to my example from before. You could have said, I'm curious. What brought you in today? Or, do you mind if I ask, is the vehicle for you or your wife? These cushions make the questions sound more conversational, which will increase trust and reduce anxiety. I want to go over a few other things. First, questions should always be used to gain information from the customer. Do not use questions to show how smart you are. Use them to get smarter. In addition, do not answer your own question. Do not try and rescue the customer. Let them answer and know when to shut up. Meaning, after you ask a question, stop talking. There is nothing wrong with a little silence. Second, even if a customer question is calling out for a sales pitch, do not take the bait. For example, your customer says, can you sell me this car for X? Or, can you get one in blue? If the answer is yes, say so. But your response should be, I am sure we can. But before getting into any depth, may I ask you what you are looking for in an SUV? Do not jump into a if I could, would you? Doing this is not consultative selling. You should always be looking for opportunities to ask a question that will give you more information. Do not ask a closing question until you feel you can get the customer to agree to your price. Next, stay on topic. Don't ask a question that goes away from the topic just because the customer gave you an objection you did not want to hear. Also, do not get defensive. If the customer says, that payment does not fit my budget, don't say, how important is quality to you? Instead, ask about their budget. This will show them that you are listening to them and will build value in your sales process. Customers will give you all the information you need to sell them a car provided that you ask the questions to get that information. The path to closing a deal is through customers' wants and needs. Questions are the driver. Asking good questions really comes down to using questions in order to understand the customer's thinking so that you can position and close. Let's take a look at a role play of me using questioning techniques with a customer. All right. So let me first ask you, how familiar are you with our product line? Uh, a little bit. I looked at some of the vehicles online. Did you go to our website or did you go to the manufacturer's website? I went to the manufacturer's and then you know, I put in my zip code and I ended up with my local store. Okay, so that's how you came here. Yes. All right, great. So you mentioned your local store, so you live locally? I live in White Plains. Okay, great. So, Michael, are you interested more in a sedan or an SUV? Um, interested in a sedan, definitely a sedan. That's what I'm looking for today. I'd want a sports car, but definitely a sedan. Okay, well tell me a little bit more about that. Well, you know, I'd like to have the performance and handling of a, of a sports car. Uh, especially with my commute, but you know, for practical reasons, I need a sedan. Okay. Um, I'm curious. How do you plan using your vehicle? Primarily, it's commuting to work, uh, weekends, running around with the kids a little bit, and you know, Saturday night out with my wife or friends. Okay. How many kids do you have? I have two. I have a ten-year-old boy and a seven-year-old girl. Okay. Do they do a lot of activities? They're they're pretty active. Uh, you know, boys get into sports teams, um, soccer and baseball. My daughter also plays plays soccer and she has dance recital, et cetera. Okay. So I'm curious, you guys, uh, baseball fans? Now that it's spring. Yeah, definitely. I, I grew up in the Bronx. I'm a Yankee fan. Okay. Yeah. Same. And he will be too. <laughs> of course, <laughs> he's going to be what the old man is, right? Right. All right. Well, great. You mentioned to me that you're going to be using your vehicle for Saturday nights with your wife. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yes, uh, you know, just to go out dinner Saturday, Saturday night, you know, just get a break from from the kids. Uh, she has she has a minivan, so looking for something to kind of balance that out. Okay, so you're not driving up to a nice restaurant in a minivan exactly. with all the kids' uh, equipment in the back. Right. All right, I hear you there. In terms of work, because you mentioned you'd be using your vehicle, is it? Do you work in a job that you use your vehicle for work or just back and forth? No, it's just commuting to work back and forth. Okay. Who do you work for, by the way? I work for Nestle. Okay. Nestle, that's. Uh, what, the one that's in White Plains about, what, 30 miles from here or so? Yes. Okay. So 
do you, in terms of miles that you'd be putting on your vehicle, other than the back and forth to work, is there a lot of other miles you'd be putting on it? It's about roughly just shy of 50 miles a day, okay. round trip. Okay. What do you currently drive? I, right now I have a 2003 Land Rover Discovery. 2003 Discovery. Is that something that you'll be trading in on your new vehicle? Yes. Okay. Tell me, what, do you, what did you like and dislike about your 2003 Discovery? Yeah, I, I liked that it was all-wheel drive. Um, you know, at, at that time I was, you know, sitting on carry on around a lot of stuff myself. Um, you know, and I, you know, but, you know, I need something, you know, more so to be a little bit pragmatic with the kids and work and I'm you know, active in the community on the school board, et cetera. Okay. You know, my wife is thinking about running for the school board. Do you find it rewarding? Yeah, I find it rewarding. I think it, it sets a good example for the kids also that, you know, I'm not just coming home and laying around the house, that, you know, I'm involved in the community. Um, just trying to, you know, set an example for them. Okay. Now you have a 2003 Discovery, which means obviously you've had it for a few years. Are you planning on keeping your new car for a few years, or is it something you want to trade in after a couple of years? No. Typically, you know, I, I would think I probably had this car probably five, six years, or you know, try and get out of it around 75,000 miles or so. Okay. Great. Well, Michael, based on the information you gave me, what I'd like to do is show you our GS. In this role play, you should have noticed a few things. First. I asked questions based on the information that the customer was giving me. In some cases, I asked that he elaborate, so I used drill down questions. At other times, I did not drill down. You know what information you need. Therefore, you should be able to determine when to drill for more information and when to move on. In some cases, I asked for more information when he mentioned something personal, like the fact that he has kids. The information he provided me with may not help me find him a specific vehicle, but it will help me develop rapport. By developing rapport, I increase the customer's trust and reduce their anxiety. Next, you should have noticed how I used cushions to make the questions sound more conversational. If you missed any of this, go back and take another look at the role play. As you can see, if you want to sell more cars with more gross profit and increase customer satisfaction, you must master the art of questioning. Asking questions will help you get all the information you need to not only sell your customer a car today, but also sell them their next 10 cars. Once again, thanks for watching.